Good morning all. In my last post bag video, uh, post bag 89 it was, I bought these. These are little 5 volt to 12 volt step up uh, converters, boost converters. Um, they were supposed to be 212s and 29s, but I actually got all 12s. It's not a major problem because I want to create lots of different ones of these. I'd like to make a 7.5, 5 stepped up to 7.5, 5 stepped up to 9, and then leave a couple of these 12 volt ones as they are. Now, I'm always raving about this power bank. Um, it's the QD184SX, and that's because it has a multi-voltage output which can go from 5 volts right up to 13 in steps of half a volt. And you can see at the moment that I've set it to 7.5 volts. But the problem with this thing is that you can't get it anymore. It's obsolete. There are alternatives to this, but I was thinking of a different way of doing it all together. Just take a regular 5 volt power bank, have a set of these set to uh, certain fixed voltages and then plug in whichever one you want. So for example, I might want to make one of these uh, at 7.5 volts. Um, this frequency counter says DC 5 to 9 volts. It has a standard linear 5 volt regulator. So what we really want to do is just go above the uh, dropout threshold for this thing. I don't know what it is, but 7.5 volts is certainly ample. Right, power bank set to 7.5 volts. Let's just power that up. And that works fine. So, one of these, 7.5 volts. What else would I like? Well, there's the DSO138 oscilloscope. Now, that says DC 9 volts, but, uh, well, surely it would work off less than that. Well, it certainly powers up on 7.5 volts, but the analog circuitry doesn't really work on this at 7.5 volts. You don't get um, a proper scope line there. So let's just bump this up, eight, eight and a half, nine. And you can see that the uh, analog line has come up. Oh, we're still on eight and a half. Okay, let's go to nine. So this scope actually does need nine volts. So certainly one of these I would like set to nine volts. So let's check out one of these uh, 12 volt step up cables. I'm gonna use a regular 5 volt power bank, so let's just plug that into there and see what we get. And uh, yes, this is turned on and that's producing 12.05 volts. Pretty good. Right, if I want to change this voltage to a lower voltage output, obviously I'm going to have to take this thing apart, so let's open this up first, take a look at uh, what's inside. I had a brief look at this in the post bag video, but let's have a closer look at this little circuit board. So inside this unit, there's a little uh, boost converter, a little step up converter. There's a six pin SOT23 uh, control chip here, capacitor on its input, capacitor on its output, inductor, shock key diode, and these two resistors which set the voltage. So the midpoint of these two resistors are connected to the feedback pin um, the top of the two resistors, or the top of the resistor divider is connected to the output, this red wire, and the bottom is connected to ground. So this is, I believe, the data sheet for the little chip that's on there, the 6-pin SOT23. Uh, it's the MT3608 High Efficiency 1.2 MHz 2-Amp Step-Up Converter. Uh, it takes of any voltage between 2 and 24 on the input. Now, because this is uh, USB, that's uh, that end, isn't it? USB, then of course it's always going to be getting 5 volts on the input. Uh, up to 28 volts output voltage. Now that is set by this potential divider, R1 and R2. And on the second page, we can see that on the feedback pin, which is where the uh, center tap of that potential divider is, we need to arrange that the uh, feedback voltage is 0.6 volts when the output voltage is what we want. So if we take a look at this 12 volt unit, let's see if the uh, potential divider would give us from a 12 volt output, 0.6 volts at the midpoint of the uh, two resistors. Now those two resistors appear to be marked uh, 36B, which goes from the feedback pin, which is the pin on the top left hand corner of the chip as we're looking at it now, 36B to ground, and 63C goes to the output. You can see it linking across to that large output capacitor. 
So 63C on top, 36B on the bottom. Now, what are these numbers, 63 and 36? Well, they actually bear no relation to the actual resistance. Uh, the C and B suffix are multipliers, but we're going to have to go to a website to check this out. Now, Chip Guy Vids in my post bag pointed me to uh, resistorguide.com. So let's take a quick look at that. So here we are on resistorguide.com. Now, normally, surface mount resistors have a marking like this, 102, which we know is 1K ohms. But the resistors that are on this device uh, are these EIA 96 resistors. And for that, we have to look at this lookup table. So the first one is 63C. Well, 63 is here. And the resistance is actually 442. C is times 100, so it's 44200. Uh, the other one was 36B, that is 232, and B is times 10, so it's 2320 ohms. So from that table on resistor guide, we can see that the top resistor is uh, 44K2, 44,200 ohms, and the bottom resistor is 2K32, or 2,320 ohms. So the ratio of this potential divider is uh, 2320 uh, divided by the sum of these two, which is 46520. So 2320 divided by 46520 is 0 0.0498. So it's almost exactly 0 0.05, which is a 20th. Now, a 20th of 12 volts um, is almost exactly 0.6 volts. So we know that that's right, but let's just multiply that by 12 and we get 0.598 volts. So what's going to happen in order that this sits at 0.6 volts, the output is going to be ever so slightly above 12 volts. And we did see that it was 12.05. So let's do the maths for this. Um, the potential divider is R2 over R1 plus R2. Now, if we multiply that by V out, that gives us 0 0.6. We know we have to have 0 0.6 on the feedback pin. So V out is 0 0.6 times this lot flipped over. So can I say that uh, V out over 0 0.6 is equal to R1 over R2 uh, plus, uh, well, 1, because it's R2 over R2, so that R1 over R2 is V out over 0 0.6 minus 1, probably. Uh, we can check that for 12 volts. So if V out is 12 volts, then 12 over 0 0.6 is 20, subtract the 1, so we get 19 equals R1 over R2. Should we see if that works? Uh, so R1 over R2 is uh, on 44200 divided by 2320 gives 19.05, so it's pretty close to 19. Okay, so now what we can do is uh, recalculate this value of 19 using a V out of 9 and get new values of R1 over R2. In fact, R1 is simply this number 19 times R2. Now, if this is 9 volts, we want 9 divided by 0 0.6 is 15 minus 1, so that will be 14. Uh, uh, so R1 will be 14 times R2. 14 times uh, R2, which is 2320. 2320. 32, uh, 480, 32.48 K ohms. So for a 9-volt output, uh, R1 needs to be 32,480. And for a 7.5-volt output, R1 needs to be uh, 26,680. So now we need to do a calculation of resistors in parallel, because I'm going to put a resistor in parallel with this existing resistor to create a new smaller resistor which lifts the feedback pin up, which will pull the V-out pin down. So resistors in parallel. Um, reciprocal of my total resistance is reciprocal of uh, this required resistance 
uh, minus the reciprocal of the R1 resistance. So, okay, let's do 1 over 32480, 1 divided by 32480. Um, that's RT, so that's going to be positive, so I'll M plus that. Now I'll do 1 divided by uh, 44200, 200, and I'll equals that and m minus that and then the resultant is the uh, is a small positive number that's correct and then I want the reciprocal of that so 1 divided by memory is uh, so we need to put a 122.49 uh, K resistor uh, so the closest one is going to be 120 K in parallel with this 44 K resistor. So we need a 120K resistor, but that's going to be a little on the low side. We're just going to pull that up a bit. We're just going to pull that down a bit. So we're going to get slightly under 9 volts, but the next resistor up is 100, uh, well, 30K, which I probably don't have. So I'm going to have to go with the 120K and have a little bit less than 9 volts on the output. Right, so I found some 120K resistors, so I'm going to take one of those out and put it in parallel with R1. So is this 120K? We've got brown, red, black, 120, and then orange. So 120K, 120K. Right, so that resistor is held with a bit of blue tack, so it shouldn't jump around. I need to solder one end to the output, and there's a big pad there, which should make that easier if I can get the solder to flow. Come on, solder. There we go. So that's one end soldered to the output. Now the other end is soldered to these two points on these two resistors. Uh, that's going to be a bit more tricky. So I've got to get this leg soldered to, well, either one of these two resistors. I think I've done it already, but let's just redo it. I think that's now on both. So yes, that appears to be soldered to those two points. So I think that's on. Let's check the output voltage. Right, power bank, let's plug this into the power bank. That has switched on, and oh, that's pretty good. Uh, oh, that's sinking a bit. So yes, as predicted, slightly below 9 volts, but 8.97. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. So that one's converted to 9 volts. Right, so that 12 sticker needs to come off. Uh, and then I've got to find some way of marking this up as 9 volts. I just use a sharpie, I think. Uh, or in my case, it's a Tian Fu marker pen. So uh, we'll just write a great big 9V on there and hope that that remains visible. Right, so reassembling this into its little case. That just presses down. Uh, and that's marked as 9V. I'll do that again on the other side. Uh, yeah, you can see it if you get it in the light, 9V, 9V. Um, right, now what was 9 volts? Well, the DSO138 scope is 9 volts. Now I've just checked the power requirement of that, and it's only 120 milliamps. This, I think the 9 volt version, they said could put out about 800 milliamps. So this should be fine for running the scope. Right, so here's the uh, DSO138 scope. That's definitely my 9 volt plug. Plug that into the power bank and we've got 9 volts going into the scope. And is that going to work? Well, it looks all right. Let's just put a bit of induced noise into that. Yeah, that's working nicely. So a 9 volt step up for driving my scope. Cool. Now, I probably won't do it now, but let's just calculate uh, the resistor value for 7.5 volts. Um, it's going to be 1 over that, which is bigger than 1 over that. So, yeah, reciprocal of 26680. Uh, let's turn that on, cancel the memory. So, 1 divided by 26680 uh, is that. Let's put that into the memory positive. And then 1 divided by 44200. 1 divided by 44200 equals let's put that into the memory negative and then we want one divided by uh, the memory result gives us 
0.3k. So 68k would do that. So yeah, that works. Modifying these uh, step-up power leads could be the answer to my obsession with multi-voltage power banks, um, which are difficult to get. So instead, just use a regular 5-volt power bank, one of these uh, step-up units. This one is my 9-volt modified, and then drive different uh, pieces of equipment off these. I like it. Cheerio.